me this morning. A Detroit pastor is under investigation now after opening fire all during Sunday church service. Yes, he opened fire towards someone that he had an ongoing issue with, and now that person is dead. Local 4's Nick Monticelli joins us now live. And Nick, I understand that that pastor felt that he was in danger. He did feel he was in danger. In fact, he actually had a relationship with the man, the suspect, this 25-year-old, who has now passed away, and the relationship apparently went south. The City of God Church was in the middle of Sunday service when a 25-year-old man walked in with a brick. Police have not released his name, but they say he was well known to the congregation and Pastor especially had a relationship with this man. Pastor had a relationship with this man. Witness News. Now the other news of the night begin with a man caught on camera confronting and threatening a nun inside a Catholic church in Brooklyn. Surveillance video showing the shirtless suspect walk into the Cathedral of St. Joseph in Prospect Heights. He approached Sister Maria Amador as she was praying in a pew and then he threatened her. When she looked at another woman in a nearby pew, the man told her, she can't help you, I'm going to kill you. That's when Sister Maria ran out of the church and called police. I started to to yeah to scream okay alejandro god okay. made me a plain direct fearless preacher mm -hmm. i fear nobody living Amen. i'd have had contract after contract after contract put out on my head bounties put out on my head threatened to bomb the churches threatened to bomb my house threatened to murder my wife and all seven of my children if I don't the stop is saying that he hopes Randolph while behind bars spends some time thinking about what he's accused of doing that bond increased from just seven thousand dollars all the way to more than a million today hey man that's not a joking thing man you had a church man and then you pull a gun this is video taken by a church deacon after Kiana Randolph allegedly pointed a gun at church members, threatened to rape the deacon's wife and harm his 20-month-old daughter. I got a little wife and a little daughter, man, you know. And it's not a joking matter, man. It all started on Sunday morning, right before service. The pastor said 100 people were inside. Randolph, he said, was slouching in his seat. I should come and woke him up, told him that uh, he couldn't sleep here. You know, he didn't come here for that. So uh, he got all angry and started cursing. Pastor Horton says that's when Randolph was told to leave. Once outside, he said Randolph pulled a gun out of his bag and threatened Miami the deacon. Gardens Pastor Eric Redden has sent several people who appeared in Local 10 News investigation letters that Redden intends to sue them for slander. But those who say the pastor ripped them off refuse to keep quiet. In May, Local 10 News did a series of stories on Redden's business practices. One elderly man claims Redden sold his dream house out from under him without him knowing. Local 10 investigator Jeff Weinseer is back on the case with this update. So what's he saying here? Uh, he's uh, saying that I slandered him. The letter in Edward Fuller's hand puts him on notice. I can't believe it. This is just, just uh, unbelievable. This man, Pastor Eric Redden, is now coming after this 70-year-old for defamation? This man took everything I had, all the most valuable thing I had in my life. Now he wants to come and try and get some more. What kind of person does that? As we reported back in May, Fuller claims Pastor Redden stole his dream house right out from under him. Fuller bought this property in Northwest Miami-Dade back in 1984. And after a 35-year career at the post office, his retirement project was to build a dream house for his family. Fuller claims he ran out of money. Redden, who he had never met before, pulled up and offered to get him loans. Fuller admits signing over the property to Pastor Redden to get the money to finish the project, but there was always a promise, as he told us back in May. I, I promise you, man, you're going to get your house back. This is what he told me. Fuller says he only found out Redden sold the house for $380,000 after he did a property search, and Fuller told us he didn't get a red cent. I said, Eric, you sold my house. And he said, I got my own personal money tied up in this house. And say, I, I, I can't lose my, lose my money. In, in this story, mm -hmm. you said that Pastor Redden stole your house. Yes. Do you stand by that statement? I stand by that statement, yes. I, can, I have documents to show that he, that he took my house. After our story ran, Fuller hired an attorney and plans on suing the pastor for taking the house. What does he think about this defamation claim? 
this is just to, 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 to try to frighten me or try to keep me from talking because just like I said, they called me to find out what they could do, in fact, to, to, uh, for me not to go forward with the suit. And what'd you tell him? I told him that uh, it was a little bit too late. He doesn't like the fact that you said he, steal, he stole money. He did steal money. Letitia Blue was also in our story back in May and was also sent this letter from Redden threatening to sue for defamation. Blue told us she gave Redden money orders totaling $3,000 as a down payment for a Mercedes. 911 one call after drama in a Pasco County church. We're told a 91 year old thought his ex girlfriend was dating the pastor, so he brought a gun to church. And then things got scary. News Channel 8's Corey Davis joins us now live in Lacoochee near Dade City. Good evening, Corey. Hey, good evening, Evan. So we're told that 91-year-old walked through the front doors here of the church with one thing on his mind, making sure his ex-girlfriend wasn't getting cozy with the pastor. New Bethel AME Church sits on a quiet dirt road near Highway 301. But the shouting over the weekend didn't have anything to do with worshiping. I'm glad that it didn't turn into a more tragic event. Witnesses told Pasco deputies that 91-year-old Cornelius Jones marched into the church Saturday, worked up and out of breath. He, he absolutely knew what he was doing. He went there for a reason. He was upset. And apparently jealous, accusing his 75-year-old ex-girlfriend who lives with him of being in a relationship with the pastor. We're told Jones showed off a gun, started cursing, then threatened to shoot the pastor right there in the sanctuary. That's when we're told everyone locked themselves in a back office and called. Basically at 703, we got a call for uh, multiple stabbings here at this address on Cambridge. Uh, when we arrived, we did find out this is a uh, non-denominational church that was holding a service when one of the uh, parishioners just out of nowhere uh, attacked the pastor and uh, another member of the band. Uh, the pastor received uh, multiple stab wounds to the uh, chest area. He has been transported to Spawn Shoreline with life-threatening life injuries. Our uh, second victim, he was stabbed in the neck. He's also transported to Shoreline with uh, life-threatening injuries. We have uh, two other victims that are stabbed. One is stabbed in the uh, hand and one in the arm. Uh, those uh, victims were pulled the suspect off the uh, preacher and the other, uh, the other band member. Uh, we do have the uh, suspect in custody. Uh, we do not know his motive right now. Uh, it's still way early in the investigation, but talking to the people there, everything was fine. It was nice and quiet. And uh, as soon as they got done singing, the uh, offender just jumped up and attacked him. They, they have uh, meeting groups. I know it used to be once a week, and lately it's been every day. But uh, there's a pretty big group here that meets here all the time now. And, and um, I don't know what religion they are or anything, but um, I know they do a lot of singing, and there's a lot of noises coming from the house. But they uh, lately they've been meeting here pretty regularly. And almost I heard what happened, and that's all that needs to be known. It was, it was a pretty... Hot pursuit, uh, very fast, and but it ended quickly, which was good. And we began this morning with that Texas massacre at the small church outside of San Antonio. One of the men who helped take down that suspected gunman and who opened fire on a Texas church is now telling his story overnight. 26 people were killed and at least 20 others were hurt when police say the alleged gunman, Devin Kelly, opened fire in the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas. The victims range in age from five to 72 years old. Among the dead, the 14-year-old daughter of the church pastor. Police say Kelly shot people both inside and outside that church until an armed neighbor intervened. That's when Kelly fled and Johnny Langendorf helped chase him down. I, I briefly saw the pistol, the sound, the bullets and everything. Okay, so you just, you heard the gun fire, but yes. you saw a flash of gun. And as rapid as the fire was from the gunman and everything, it was, he definitely had a pistol. Now, Kelly was later found dead inside his vehicle. Police are trying to find out if Kelly died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound or if he was shot by that neighbor. Right now, investigators are working to find out why Kelly opened fire on the church. The Pentagon is confirming that Kelly served in the Air Force. He was court-martialed in 2012 for assaulting his spouse and his infant. He was discharged two years later. In a statement while visiting Japan, President Trump spoke about the shooting, calling it tragic and saying it is the result According of a mental health According to this police problem. report, a church member told police that Kaylin Hodges walked into this church, Mountaintop Faith Ministries, and told a church member he wanted to be, quote, the greatest mass shooter in history.
Police say Hodges walked into the church during an evening service on February 21st. A church member told police about 35 to 40 people were attending the service when they found Hodges sleeping on a bench. According to police, the church member encountered Hodges, who told him he wanted to be the greatest mass shooter in history. He also told the church member he planned to record the attack on a GoPro. Police say the church member recorded a conversation with Hodges on their cell phone and later gave it to officers. According to police, a person could be heard mentioning one October shooter, Stephen Paddock, and saying they completely salute all mass shooters. Police say they do believe the recording was of Hodges. The congregation was quickly evacuated and Hodges was arrested inside the church. We did ask the church if they wanted to make a comment on this situation. They said they did not. As for Hodges, he does face charges on making a terroristic threat. Reporting from Lindell in Sahara, Lesson 13 Action News.